Good morning and welcome to our Facebook Live this morning. My name's Jenny McCormack and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm based in the market town of Brackley in the UK. Thanks for joining me this morning and yesterday we made if I can find it now. <laughs> here we go. I knew it was here somewhere. Yesterday we made this cute little card. And that's because I'd seen um, Sam Dempsey Clark from the Little Greenhouse do <coughs> a fold out version of this yesterday. And I've had this stamp set, but I haven't inked it up as I've been busy with lots of other bits and pieces. So I decided yesterday to ink it up and create a basic card, which is what I did here. And the stamp set is called Woodland Wonder. And it's on page 53 of our mini catalog. This is the stamp set here. It's a real fun stamp set. It's 16 pounds. And it features this tree, as you can see, and it comes in three parts. So you can make this tree the full length, or you can do what I did yesterday, which is just the tree top and the tree bottom. Um, but the idea is that you can make this uh, extendable card here, or pull out card, depending on what you'd like to call it. And they do actually give you dimensions on the catalogue page itself so it tells you that the card is four inches by ten and three quarters and it does give you the metric measurements as well and it's scored at five and a quarter and eight I wanted to slightly change this up I wanted more of a border so it but this will fit a standard card but I wanted more of a border so I did a little hunt around and I found a great YouTube tutorial by Linda Heller from Stamping School. She's based over in the States and she had some slightly different measurements and I've converted those slightly again <laughs> for the UK market. So I'm hopefully going to go with those. Let me show you the effect that we're going to get. Um, ignore these measurements um, slightly because I have changed them. But basically what we're going to do is stamp the tree in a long line for its, with its three components. So we've got the base, the middle and the top. Obviously if you had a really long piece of card you could have another middle if you wanted to. And so this will fold down and fit on the front of a card and then opens up. So this was my, this was the one based on the one from Linda, which fits an American card. So I'm just, I've just changed the measurements slightly and I'll show you those for a UK card. Um, now I had to have a little play with this and I'll show you why, if I can find it. Morning, Carol. Oh, morning, Jacqueline. So, in order for this tree to fold down, you need the larger piece at the bottom, and then the smaller piece, and then the middle size piece. When I first did it, I thought, oh, it needs the small piece at the bottom. And if you do that, then what happens when you fold it up is you either get the bottom of the tree or the top of the tree um, you don't get that um, mix so um, I learned the hard way from that that the bottom piece needs to have um, is needs to be the larger piece like so it's going to go that way it's the way I've um, arranged it to work okay so let's get cracking Morning Carol, Jeanette, Jill and Monica. Good morning. 
thanks so much for joining me today it's really nice to have have you on board so this was the um, simple version so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this is half of an A4 piece of card and I'm going to cut this to size um, I will add a comment with the measurements on at the <coughs> when the video is finished but basically this is going to be 10 centimeters across and this would be a standard size um, that I would use for a, a layer on a card and this starts as A4 so I'm going to cut it at 10 centimeters hi Jeanette I think I said hi I can't remember now I do apologize if I didn't <coughs> and the total length is going to be um, 24 centimeters so I'm just going to bring this out or if you prefer that's going to be three and seven eighths by nine and a half inches so this is 24 give or take okay and it's a really easy score line it's going to be I'm sorry this is now inches four inches and six inches let me move these stamps out of the way so score at four, like so, and six, like so. So remember the largest piece is going to be at the bottom. And that's the difficult bit out of the way. So to show you how this is going to fold, it's going to fold this one back and this one in, like so. So you get that effect. And what we're going to do is have the very top bit attached, if I just show you. So that will fit nicely on my card. This bit is going to be attached and I'm going to put a little um, pull on here so that this will pull down like so. Okay. So I guess you could do the stamping beforehand, cut it to the width do the stamping and then cut the top off if you wanted to. I'm not particularly worried about the fact that I've got these fold lines in here because if we colour the tree in, um, you're not really going to lose anything on the fold lines. Now, what we want to do is stamp the base of the tree first and I'm just going to bring this up a little bit from the bottom. I know that it will fit on our card. I know that we've got plenty of height for it to fit okay so I can go up a little bit I don't want to come too far down okay otherwise the top of our tree you know will be on this fold and you want it just very slightly left of center or you could have it in the center but my plan is to put this sentiment that says hope your day stacks up to be one good thing on top of another and I want to put this at the side somewhere and if you've got it right in the middle it's a little bit tighter fit so just very slightly left but not too far left that it falls off the end so a little bit of time to think about this one let me just bring my comments back sorry everybody so what we're going to do is stamp this so I could if, to give you an indication I could measure this so this is a little bit over three so it's about 3.2 centimeters from the left hand side will give you a nice 
um, edge so if you wanted to you could mark that out as knowing that's where you need the edge of the tree I'm just going to wing it and hope that I get it right hi Linny <laughs> okay so I'm just using um, early espresso there's no surprise there I think I need to re-ink this one again okay so I'm going to stamp this a little bit over from the center and up slightly and what you want to do is get this tree nice and straight okay what you could do is you could and I do love my t-square as you can see you could draw a very fine line either on the center of the tree or to the left to give you a guide for um, keeping that nice and straight so let's just do that I wonder if I might do that on the left hand side my gut feel was to put it in the middle but there we go just so that when it folds down it's still in line now I appreciate you probably can't see that pencil line okay but obviously if this is very slightly off then when you fold it down the tree won't appear as one okay so now we're going to stamp the middle section and I do prefer with a big stamp like this to have it this way around because I find it very difficult to stamp like that okay um, so I'm going to ink that up and stamp it like that and you will find that the tree matches up really well she says <laughs> and yet when I do it live you can guarantee it's going to be wonky of course so while this is inking up I hope everybody is well it's nice and bright and sunny again today so that's two days in a row that we've had dry weather and sunshine okay so I'm going to bring this down okay keep this nice and flat as I say you could easily stamp this and then do your scoring afterwards okay so I am going to have to bring this down a bit I'm really sorry <laughs> because otherwise the camera is between me so what I'm doing is just lining up the bottom of this tree with the top of the other one and I can't really see my pencil mark to be honest so just taking time to get that lined up there we go so it's very slightly off but I'm not I'm not too worried about that at all except I've just caught the edge of the stamp on here so I'm going to cut another piece but let me just put the top piece on and then I'll cut another one and I'll show you obviously without all the talking excuse me I'm going to sneeze me I'm going to pop this one on the top like so there we go okay so perfect apart from catching the edge of the block so what I should have done was taken the ink to the stamp a bit better. Thank you. Um, let me find my thing this way. Oh, thank you, Molly. Bless you too. 
<laughs> okay, so let me just grab another piece of card. Um, just so I can do it. If we're going to do it, you might as well do it properly. So I, like, I can do it without all the too much chattering. Okay. So, 10 centimeters. So this is starting with an A4 piece of card. By 24. Or nine and a half inches if you prefer. And scored so let's try stamping it before I do the scoring okay so let's give this a second go so this is the base of the tree so I'm going to have this slightly left of centre and slightly high. You could have this um, further down, but you don't want to risk your tree top not working because that's, that's the effect that you want. And if you have this tree right the way down there, um, it could interfere. And equally, you don't want it too high that you have the top of this little squirrel. Okay, so I'm going to turn this round and let's this ink this up a little bit more carefully this time. I must have obviously taken this to the to the ink pad and not the other way around. So when you're inking, you want always want either the ink pad or the stamp on the table. Okay, so I'm going to risk the. I'm going to draw a line obviously otherwise it's going to be one of those days <laughs> so I'm just going to draw this and with any luck that will be hidden by the line but if not I'll, I shall rub it out when the ink is dry so um, I'm not too too worried okay so I'm lining that up looking for this line at the top and obviously making the connection here at the bottom are you holding your breath I wonder okay Carol no worries There we go. And then this tree top here. So I've still got a little bit where I moved, but I'm just going to make that look like a little knot in the tree. Okay, just making sure that's well inked. And I'm actually going to rub out this the very top of that if I could see my rubber there we go this is my you'll laugh at this this is my stamping up first aid kit okay so it's a plaster tub 
and in it it has plasters in case I cut myself while I'm crafting especially when I'm live it's got my um, adhesive remover it's got a sand eraser for spare bits of ink and my um, rubber as well so that's mine my stamping first aid kit there we go okay so I know I've inked this up and just lining that up there we go perfect well nearly perfect it will do the job now I'm going to do the um, scoring so four inches from the bottom so maybe this is a good idea um, to do your stamping first and then your scoring so four inches from the bottom and six inches there we go nice and crisp and clean <laughs> so the way that this is going to fold is that this will fold down and this will fold up like so so then you should have the perfect alignment of the tree top and bottom and then this is going to so this bit is going to pull down like so like that okay so um i am going to do some coloring in but i really want to show you the finished mechanism because then those that need to go don't have to wait for me to do all the coloring in let's pop um this sentiment on in the middle so this says hope your day um stacks up to be one good thing on top of another And I quite like that in this middle section. Like so. Because also there's nothing sort of in the way here. And then you can add lots of bits and pieces to these. So we have a selection of items. Hi Katie. So we've got a little rabbit at the bottom that we had yesterday. Or you could have him or her poking out anywhere along the tree. And then we've got the banner. We've got a little flag. We've got a balloon. We've got music. So there's all sorts of things you can add to that if you want to. So let me do that. My Facebook has just disappeared out yet again. So let's just do a little bit of stamping and then I'm going to put the card together and then I'll do my colouring afterwards. Okay, so that I'm not keeping those of you waiting that saw it um, yesterday. So let's put a couple of clouds in. This is balmy blue. Like so. And then let's have um, we've got the music for the bird here. Now I'm going to let this all dry um, and rub out because I can just see my pencil mark here and rub that out before I start colouring. make sure I get the music the right way around so there's the music and then we've got the little post and banner and we've got a balloon so the we've got a balloon and a cat hair there we go 
So this little owl here could be holding the balloon or he could be holding the little flag. There's a little flag as well. Let's go for the balloon. Like so. And let's pop a banner here on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is put the pole in first. So this banner you can put on either side. There we go. And then this says hip hip hooray. And the little um, bows go above the banner pole. There we go. So you can see how that's all. So that's all hidden. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> so I didn't think about that. So if I put that any further down, that would have been showing. And I quite like the fact that this looks plain before you start. And then when you open it up. So thank you, whoever was helping me with that. And let's put the little rabbit at the bottom. Oh, we've got butterflies and all sorts. Uh, let's put the rabbit in. As I say, I will colour this, um, but I just want to put the cards together. Um, first. So that you don't have to sit for ages watching me colour. So this was the coloured version from yesterday. Okay, so I could have a happy birthday on there. Um, but I'm going to leave that for the moment. And just assemble this card. And then I'll finish off the um, all the bits and pieces. So this is going to go on to a standard size card. So I have an early espresso card here. And what I'm going to do is attach it so that only this top bit is attached. And I'm going to put a little tab on here so they know to pull it down. OK. So the first thing I want to do is gently rub out that additional um, line that I used for lining up my tree. It is well hidden on that side. And if you do this, make sure you've got a good quality rubber. Don't pick up one that's been in your junk drawer for ages and it's got coated in bits and pieces just keep a nice clean good quality rubber which is why I have my little first aid tin with my rubbers and my plasters in okay so what I want to do is add a little tab at the bottom so I'm just going to grab a little bit of ribbon and I've got this one here because it's so it would go with the um, brown and I'm just going to literally do a little loop of ribbon it might be a little bit too big but you'll get the um, You'll get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to turn that over and pop this in the middle just as a little loop, like so. And I'm just looking for my glue, which is hidden under all my pens. <laughs> so what I'm actually going to do is add a piece of card on top of this. 
okay so that that ribbon is um con you know concealed so i don't need to worry about let me turn this round so i just want this bit for the ribbon first so and then I've got this bit to go on top now I am just going to just take a little bit of this width off just because I don't want it showing on top of the other card the height doesn't really matter because that's all going to be concealed you could put a secret message behind that if you wanted to so that's going to go on there to form the tab so I'm going to put plenty of um, seal on here like so so this would be great obviously for a child's card um, but I think it it would it would just be a fun card for all sorts of occasions as well wouldn't it and um, what I do like, this has got a From All of Us sentiment. So as well as birthday, it's got, um, what's it got? Congratulations. So you could do happy birthday from all of us. Congratulations for all from all of us. So that would be good if you've got, if it's from, you know, the whole family or from people at work, for example. Okay, so this is how that's going to go onto there. And I've got my little pull here. Okay, so what I want to make sure is that these folds are obviously nice and crisp, so it's going to sit nice and flat. This is just standard basic white card that I'm using. I'm not using our um, thick card or anything. You don't want it too bulky. You could use coloured cardstock if you wanted as well. Because I'm just giving that a nice amount of pressure. And then just this top section is going to go onto there. Actually, a little happy birthday there would work, wouldn't it? And then when you pull that down. So let me stamp that before anything else. I noticed that um, Sam Dempsey Clark, who did her card yesterday morning, her her grandson, it's his birthday today. So I wonder if she's done her one for him. Maybe. Okay. So make sure you've done all the stamping before. Oops. Before you attach it to the um, base card. Try this one out. There we go. There we are. Happy birthday. Okay, so now I'm going to put fold this up, and what I'm actually going to do is just draw a line here. So that I know the glue only needs to go on that very top bit. Because the temptation would be to put all of that down. And then this wouldn't this wouldn't work in the same way. You couldn't tuck it underneath. Okay. So there we go. And that, that will be the mechanism. So you could use this for any tree. Um, if you've got something where you could mask off the top section and the bottom section to make it really long um i did have a fun thought uh, this morning which was i've got the 
hot dog stamp set which features sausage dogs and so wouldn't it be fun to have a sausage dog that starts here ends here and has a long bit of sausage dog in the middle so there we go there's our mechanism and that just tucks up under there really nicely um, so I might have to give that a go with one of the sausage dogs that's called hot dog it is okay so that is our card mechanism like so okay sort of flips back underneath really easily and then I've got a white card base for the inside okay that I'll decorate with um, probably the little rabbit I could do maybe the edge of the tree and the rabbit but let's just pop the rabbit on there and pop him in and that's the basic card done and all I'm going to do is finish by colouring it yes. Oh, I didn't put the butterflies on. So I've got butterflies and all sorts that I can add. But let's just do this for the moment. Like so. So what do you think? Do you think this is a fun card? Let me find you again. My phone's lost you. So. There we go. Okay, so let's pop this in. Yes, it's funny, Lynn. I've had the set for a little while, but not used it until I saw Sam use it yesterday. And then I thought, oh, I so need to give this one a go. Um, so I will put these measurements on the comments underneath. Now, if you wanted to, you could add... Um, a sentiment on here so you could put a larger piece of card so I just put a piece of white card on if you're worried about the um, the ink coming through from the blends pens um, you could put a whole piece of card on um, but I'm just going to put the message here at the bottom and just a straight bit of coloring I've got um, let's go soft suede for our trunk yesterday I did this one which was um, crumb cake so let's do a little bit of soft suede obviously this is quite a long bit to cover so if you've seen enough <laughs> then and you want to go that's absolutely fine I understand that um, but I'm just going to finish this off with some coloring this is light it's the dark I wanted Thank you, Jill. I bet your grandson would like this, wouldn't he? So just drawing that down from the top. So we've got an owl, we've got a raccoon, we've got a little bird on a nest, we've got a squirrel and a little bird in the top. And I'll um, use the blends pens as well to um, create a bit of sky and everything so you can go to town with this if you want so I definitely think stamping it before you do your scoring is a good plan because you've got a flatter piece to work on make this one make a great congratulations card as well doesn't it a 
and then like soft suede. Oh, bless you, Kerry. Thank you. I'm glad you've been enjoying them. So you were you um did you catch my videos on Facebook or did you catch them on YouTube, I wonder. I'm always interested to know. So if you want to share, I would love to know. There we go. Oh, the dino set. Well, there you are, Jill. <laughs> this could be the perfect answer. This is dark crumb cake. And I'm just going to use that. Oh, that's darker than I thought. Let's go light crumb cake. If I can see it. Just want the tree to look slightly patchy. Oh, bless you, Kerry. So it's evening time for you then. Well, thank you for taking the time to um, to find me. It's always appreciated. Okay, so here's our tree. So I'm using the fine tip, the little bullet tip, for the close areas by the animals. So I find that um, I have more control that way. So this is soft suede, light, dark, and then I've got light crumb cake here. But obviously you could use any, any browns of choice that you've got. And if you don't like using um, alcohol markers, you could use um, watercolour pencils just on their own. If you wanted to use watercolour, you would need to stamp in stays on ink and use either shimmer white paper or watercolour paper. Actually thinking about it, watercolour paper wouldn't um, fold as nicely, so definitely use um, shimmer white if you're going to do that. You could use stamp and write markers as well. Um, because it's only a small area that you're covering, I think you could you could easily get away with that. Okay, so there's our tree. Let's add a bit of grass. Let's cover up this ink pad before I drink something in it. Okay, Katie, thanks for joining us. Oh, 10.45. Oh, okay, so exactly 12 hours difference then. And what part of Australia are you from, Kerry? Oh, did you say that? Oh, no, you just said Australia. Not that my geography is very good, I have to say. So just using a little bit of dotting here. So it's a slightly softer edge. And you can do that on your tree as well. And you can also take the darker colour around each of the characters because obviously there'd be shadow under the characters and also it could be a little bit marked where they're popping in and out of their little holes. somebody out on the main road with some very loud music in their car or van maybe they're delivering I don't know there we 
Okay, just out of Munich Castle in New South Wales. Excellent. Right, let's do some um, foliage in the trees. So the one that I did yesterday, I just used the dark old olive on the stalk elements where the sort of veins or the centre of the leaf would be, like so. it's so nice to have the sunshine coming in I can't tell you there we go have a bit of this could be sort of yellow for straw and stuff but let's just do it green and some there Bundaberg in Queensland. So you'll have to tell me, Monica, how far that is away from Kerry. As I say, I do apologise. My um, geographical knowledge of foreign countries is rather poor. So Molly, who is um, one of my customers who is here, she has family in Australia, don't you, Molly? Well, actually, Molly has family all over the world. So when you're doing a large amount of colouring, what you might like to do is cover up the rest of your work so I've got a piece that's a piece of whisper white but I would just use oh wow 15 hours um you could just use some scrap paper you know photocopy paper they don't call it photocopy paper anymore we didn't have photocopiers did we at home um so that you're not getting if you've got any ink on your hands you don't want to transfer it and also if you accidentally dropped your pen or knocked your pen um, what you wouldn't want that to do is go onto your work. So use a piece of spare card to protect your work because I'd hate you to, as I say, drop something on there right at the last minute. So I'm just colouring these in just really um, quickly leaving a little bit of white around this one i colored in in more detail but i'm just leaving a little bit of white so this is the quick and easy version card <laughs> this one you need to um, take a little bit more time over as i say i will put the measurements in the comments and let's pop that on there we go let's color our bird in and i did a little bit of yellow and blue yesterday for the um this one no, I did blue and brown, sorry. Let's just do a little bit of yellow. And there's blue. And I nearly did blue beak then. <laughs> so there's a little beak there. And a bit of light crumb cake. Go. 
setting that up so there's the little bird at the top and then I'm just going to work my way down with the other characters as I say just use something on there to protect your um, work let's add this one in the same colours I know he's cute isn't he so I'll do the yellow like that a little bit of blue And then we've got a squirrel here, so I'm going to do him in, or her, in, this is light grey granite. Let's have a look to see. Oh, that will do nicely. The grey squirrel. So here in the UK, we have lots of grey squirrels. And we have some red squirrels but they're quite unusual i think there's a lot of red squirrels in scotland and maybe in more northern parts but certainly around here they're all gray let's do a little petal pink nose like so Okay, and while I'm here, I'm going to do the pink in the rabbit's ears. And there. I don't think I need any pink there. I need to decide what colour balloon I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do yellow, of course. This is Dark Daffodil Delight. So, and grab light daffodil. I've got probably, no, not quite half of my pens out, to be fair. Thank you Kerry. Right now we've got a little um, raccoon here and I'm going to use the slate as well because it is quite a um, it's quite dark here and I don't really I don't want to use black otherwise um, you won't see the detail at all. I'm just going to leave it like that, I think. We don't have raccoons here, <laughs> so I don't really know what colours they would be. Uh, right, let's go much darker for this owl. So I'm going to do dark soft suede. Up here, oh, my stomach's grumbling. Like so. Little orange cheek. And then light crumb cake. So you could easily add um, Wink of Stella. Um, to the balloons and then with the other little components I'm going to leave his eyes white like that and then finally the bunny rabbit and then I have got some little butterflies that I can put on let's do the rabbit in all in light crumb cake I think
them. So where you've got small areas, just a light touch, just nice and gentle. And that's just blended in where his um, or her cheeks are. So I could extend this out a little bit if I wanted to. I'm happy with it as it is. Um, and I'm not going to tempt fate by adding butterflies in. <laughs> um, so there is that part of the card, like so. What I am going to do, thank you, is um, add with my blending brush some blue into the sky. So yesterday I did the clouds blue, but as I said yesterday, the clouds really aren't blue. The clouds should be white. So what I'm going to do is cut out some masks to put over these clouds and then use my blending brush over those um, to get the sky effect. So I need to find a post-it note or two. I'd love to know where all my post-it notes go. This is not very good post-it note. Uh, bear with me, everybody. Okay. So I remember now, putting some post-it notes sa somewhere safe. Okay. So what I'm going to do is stamp the cloud onto the top of my post-it note. This, this one has got a nice amount of um, stick on it. So I'm just going to stamp that, cut it out and put it over these so that when I run the brayer over it, or my blending brush rather, um, it will leave the clouds as white. There you are, there's a challenge for you, Lynn. <laughs> um, right, clouds. And it doesn't matter what, what colour I stamp them, because this is just going to be for my mask. So I'm going to stamp them once. And firstly cut these out. And what you want to do when you're doing a mask for covering something up is you want the mask to be cut just inside the cut lines. Now I'm only using a blending brush so it's not as if I'm stamping. I could of course um, stamp another cloud so I might try that as well so that I've got two clouds together so here I've got if I can get them apart this one There's a little bit missing on the side, but I'm not too worried about that. Two. And three. So just to show you, if I wanted to put two of these um, together, let's open this back up, make sure I clean this off. So if you wanted two clouds together without it obviously looking like it's overlapping, which it would be if we just stamped them. So if I just stamped and stamped again, 
you get this overlap I'm not sure that you can see that actually in the shade but if I now stamp another cloud here and when I lift that off you'll see we've got the cl two clouds together okay so I'm just going to use my blending brush to add a little bit of sky so I have just one for blues I find that does um, perfectly if you use a darker one just um, make sure you're wiping it um, off in between um, colors I'm going to need an extra mask but I'll cheat a little bit okay so this is where I was yesterday as you can see so I just want to take some of that color off and add a little bit of sky so these ones I'm going right the way over and I'm just going to be move that mask down a little bit when I come to this one okay so watch out for this seam as you can see there it's picked that up where that seam is So maybe what you want to do is all of your stamping and colouring before you do your um, putting together. So I'm just doing little patches to give it more of a background. Let's move this one over it on there there we, go. there we are so now it's got a little bit more interest going on here and then I'm just going to do a little bit of greenery across the bottom and we're done so thank you for sticking with me. That's um, an hour, an hour's worth of crafting. Is the green, and it's probably got plenty on from yesterday. I only want a little bit on there. I don't want to get it all over my ribbon. Just add a little bit more green, and we're all done. So the difficulty for this now will be how I photograph this. <laughs> It'll have to be a before and after. Or maybe I'll do a little um, video of it opening and closing. That would be fun, wouldn't it, if I can do that. There we go. So there is our finished card let me put this under here to cut, cut out all of that oh that looked a bit odd didn't it there we go so i've now got my white clouds and then this will tuck underneath and hopefully by having the little tag there people will realize that they can open it up and then inside I'll colour in my little rabbit and maybe add a little bit of grass or maybe put the edge of the tree on this side possibly. Um, but there we go. So I hope you enjoyed today. Sorry it was a little bit longer than planned. Thank you Jeanette. Oh, last night's show. 
um yes that was this one here wasn't it um so there we go so the stamp set is called woodland wonder um that's it um stamped in its entirety i haven't added the butterflies or anything um but i could do that i'm not going to risk adding anything now at this point um so there we go i hope you've enjoyed it i will add a comment with the measurements for you and the scoring um, and that will fit a standard uk c6 um a6 card okay thank you so much for joining me everybody i really appreciate the time you've taken to spend with me thank you for your lovely comments and your hearts and your likes i shall be back tomorrow thursday at 5 p.m and if my te technology works i will be on youtube um but i'm hoping to stream it to facebook we'll see i might have to have a practice go um later on to see how we get on so thank you so much i really appreciate your time look after yourselves look after your loved ones go and pop the kettle on and have a nice drink and i look forward to crafting with you again soon thank you so much <laughs> bye bye everyone <laughs>